So, two-point source interference, the first thing that you're going to want to do when you get a problem involving this scenario, uh, and see previous video for uh, more information on what's going on here, but um, just get this into the mode we want. Let's first of all label these two sources, and let's pick a point somewhere in this picture. I'm going to pick this point right here, okay, and I'm going to call this P1. Okay. Can you find this point on your picture and put it in? Okay. Now, the question is, is P1 on a nodal or an anti-nodal line? You can see. Is it an, on a node or an anti-node? It's on an anti-node. Which anti-node is it on? It's on the first anti-node. Excellent. How do I know that? Because there's the central maximum. Oops switch to pen mode. There's a central maximum, which we call C, okay? And you see that at C, crest, meet crest, right? And besides that, we'll know that there's a nodal line, N1, where troughs meet crest. And over here, following down, we have that anti-nodal line. Okay, now, what we're going to do is we're going to draw straight lines from the source to P1, okay? So let's do that. Okay. You know what, I don't really like that color. I want something different. Let's make it like... Uh, what color is going to work for you guys here? Ah, that's a nice one. Okay, we'll go with that. So we're going to lay these lines in, and then we're going to label them, okay? Um, so just bear with me for a sec. Uh, this one will be S1, P1, and our symbol for a line, right, is just essentially that. And this line is S2, P1, okay? So these are the two lines. Now, here's the question. But how much do these lines differ from one another in terms of wavelengths. S1, P1, minus S2, P2, sorry, S2, P1. And if I put the absolute value, what this will allow is that I could have this actually over here on this line without changing the math, right? So we're saying the absolute value. We're saying the difference in path length between S1, P1 and S2, P1 should be equal to how many wavelengths? Well, let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, that equals 1 wavelength. Okay. Now let's move over somewhere else. Let's go over to this point right here. Let's call this P2. Okay. Are you with me? So let's pick a point now. This is going to be over on the second antinodal line, right? Here's the first. We'll call that A1 prime. Okay, and then over here you've got your A2, A of course standing for anti-node, and this one is on the second anti-nodal line, so A2 prime, okay. Now, we're going to do the same thing we just did, we're going to measure the path length. One, and there's two, okay. So we'll write down our same thing. So now we have, oops, now we have, just let, me, just let me clean this up a bit. Okay. Now we have this, S1 to P2, right? That's some value, minus S2, P2. 
PD2. X, of course, standing for source, and P being a point on a nodal line at this point, or an anti-nodal line. How many wavelength difference are you going to have at this point? Well, let's count. One, two, three, four wavelengths from there. One, two, three, four, five, six wavelengths from there. Two wavelengths will differ. Okay, this is true for antinodal line 1, this is true for antinodal line 2, okay? What if I put a point over, let's see, here, we'll call this P3, without actually doing any counting, we're drawing a line. Well, we could draw the lines, actually. Draw the lines just to help you out. So this is over on, on anti-nodal line 3 here, right? So, oh, no. Go back there. What happened? Oh, man. It moved itself. Let's put it back. Go back there. Okay. <laughs> this is on, uh, on anti-nodal line 3, right? There was 2... There was one, there's your central. So I think hopefully you can see that there's a pattern developing here. And hopefully you're understanding why this pattern is developing. But we do this, and we do this. Okay, we should be able to write another truth about this. So now we've got... <laughs> here. Okay. There, I think I think we're good. Oh, come on. Okay, good. Okay, so S1, P3, uh, minus S2, P3. So in other words, the difference in the lengths between these lines, the absolute value thereof, because you can't have a negative wavelength, should be equal to three wavelengths. Okay? And I'm just going to put et cetera, because we're good to go. And I'm going to reset this, and we're going to look at what happens on the nodal lines. Okay? Okay. Let's look at some points on nodal lines now and see what we see. So let's get our S's back in place. Uh, can you please write? Thank you. S1, S2. And just to keep continuity, we'll go with um, P4. Now, I'd like to draw in the central maximum for myself just to kind of get some uh, geography set up here, right? So there's my central maximum. Okay, so in here, what we are seeing is we are seeing a crest right kind of in the middle of nowhere, right? So let's put a point there. Now let's call this point P4. Now, if the antinodal line is right here, this makes P4 sit on a nodal line, the first nodal line, okay? And on the first nodal line, you have deconstructive interference. So, if we were to pop in our distance here, like that, and like that, okay. Now, if we look at the differences between these, let's do that. So, we've got S1, P4, we've got that line, we're going to minus... S two P four. Do that. We want to know how many wavelengths there are different between them. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five and a half. Right? This equals five and a half wavelengths. Right? And this is one, two, three. Four or five wavelengths. So we get they differ by half a wavelength. That's exactly what we would expect, right? Because half a wavelength put, wavelength puts these out of phase with each other. Okay? So in other words, points on N1 differ by a half wavelength. Let's write that down. Points on N1 
differ in path length from source sources by half a wavelength. Okay, perfect. Now, let's move over and let's check something that is on the second nodal line. Let's get this guy right here. We'll call this P5. Okay? We'll show in our we'll put in our anti-nodal lines. There's P1. Oh, oops. There's A2. I think I actually flipped over to the third nodal line, but that's okay. I think we'll see what's going on here anyway. So there's N1. N2 would have been in here. So this is actually, and I accidentally did this, over on N3. This is on nodal line 3 over here, right? So let's see if we can skip right ahead and, and see what happens here. So at this point, we skip the second nodal line, and we're on to the third nodal line. It's on the third node. Okay, so we've got S1 to P5, subtracting S2 to P5, and that's going to equal what difference in wavelengths? Well, let's count them up, and put them in, there's that, and there's that, okay, so if I go ahead and I start counting, one, two, three, Three, four, five, six, and a half. Six and a half there, and one, two, three, four there. So we have a six and a half wavelengths minus four wavelengths should give us two and a half wavelengths. Well, what do you think this point over here was? one and a half wavelengths difference, okay? So essentially, as nodal lines go up, okay, the number of wavelengths goes up as well, but they're always gonna differ from each other by a half. So we have a generalized formula to deal with this, okay? Before we do, I'm just gonna write a little note about it. So we'll say, on nodal lines, the path length difference will vary by n minus one half lambdas. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, n is the number of the nodal line Right, so on the first, they this was nodal line one, they differed by half a lambda. On nodal line two, two minus a half is one and a half lambdas. On nodal line three, three minus a half is two and a half lambdas, and so on, up, okay? And what that lends, lends itself to is this generalized formula, which says the distance of the path length from P1 to S1 minus P2, oh, sorry, that's not right. We were doing it this way, weren't we? S1, P1, minus S2, P1. It doesn't matter what order you put these in. That's irrelevant. Okay. Equals N minus one half wavelengths. Okay. And this is for nodal lines. You're not given a formula for anti-nodal lines because you're expected to understand that they differ by a whole number wavelength. Okay? You're only given this formula on your formula sheet. Alright? Now let's put it to use. Let's try something. Okay, are you ready to try an example question? Okay. Sure. I'm just going to write this down. A point on uh, a nodal line, and we'll say it's nodal line 5, is found to be 
18 centimeters from S1. And 10 centimeters from S2. Okay. Find the wavelength. Okay, so just to put, just to put, um, you know, a mental picture here, what we're saying is, if this is antinodal line one, two, three, four, five would be over here somewhere. We don't actually have, it's not, it's not showing this here, right? But the, your P1 is over here on N equals five, right? Somewhere over on the fifth nodal line. So what we're saying is, the difference between these two path lengths, if this is S1 and this is S2, is as follows. So what we get here is we just put in the actual values for this. So 18 centimeters minus 10 centimeters, right? These are the two path length differences, equals n minus 1 half lambdas. So 8 centimeters should be equal to, well, n is 5, right? We're on the fifth nodal line, so we should have a 4.5 wavelength difference between the two path lengths. So it's equal to four and one half lambdas. Okay, so then lambda must be equal to eight centimeters divided by 4.5. And so what you will get for that is you will get that one wavelength in this case should be equal to 1.78 centimeters. Okay, and this is basically how we use this formula. And that will do it. So what changes is which nodal line you're on.